The Law of One, unabridged transcription of contact between the L and L group in registered trademark and the social memory complex known as RAW. Session 29. I am RAW. I greet you in the love and in the light of the infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, is our sun, this planetary system, as we know it a sub-logos or the physical manifestation of a sub-logos? I am RAW. This is correct. Questioner, then I am assuming the sub-logos created this planetary system in all of its densities. Is this correct? I am RAW. This is incorrect. The sub-logos of your solar entity differentiated some experiential components within the patterns of intelligent energy set in motion by the logos which created the basic conditions and vibratory rates consistent throughout your, what you have called, major galaxy. Questioner. Then is the sub-logos which is our sun the same sub-logos but just manifesting in different parts through the galaxy which is is it all the stars in this galaxy? I am raw. Please restate. Questioner, what I'm saying is there are roughly 250 billion stars or suns something like ours in this major galaxy. Are they all part of the same sub-logos? I am raw. They are all part of the same logos. Your solar system, as you would call it is a manifestation somewhat and slightly different due to the presence of a sub-logos. Questioner, now, all of these let me be sure I'm right then. Then our sun is a sub-logos of the logos that is the major galactic logos. Correct. I am raw. This is correct. Questioner, are there any sub-sub-logos that are found in our planetary system that are logos that are sub to our sun? I am raw. This is correct. Questioner, would you tell me what one of those would you give me an example of one of those? I'll call sub-sub-logos. I am raw. One example is your mind-body-spirit complex. Questioner, then every entity that exists would be some type of sub or sub-sub-logos. Is this correct? I am raw. This is correct down to the limits of any observation, for the entire creation is alive. Questioner, then the planet which we walk upon here would be some form of sub-sub-logos. Is this correct? I am raw. A planetary entity is so named only as logos if it is working in harmonic fashion with entities or mind-body complexes upon its surface or within its electromagnetic field. Questioner, okay. Do the sub-logos, such as our sun, do any of them in our major galaxy do they have a metaphysical polarity, shall we say? positive or negative as we've been using the term, I am raw. As you use the term, this is not so. Entities through the level of planetary have the strength of intelligent infinity through the use of free will, going through the actions of beingness. The polarity is not, thusly, as you understand polarity. It is only when the planetary sphere begins harmonically interacting with mind-body complexes, and more especially mind-body-spirit complexes, that planetary spheres take on distortions due to the thought complexes of entities interacting with a planetary entity. The creation of the one infinite creator does not have the polarity you speak of. Questioner, thank you. Yesterday you stated that planets in first density are in a timeless state to begin with. Can you tell me how the effect we appreciate as time comes into being? I am raw. We have just described to you the state of beingness of each logos. The process by which space-time comes into continuum form is a function of the careful building, shall we say, of an entire whole plan of vibratory rates, densities, and potentials. When this plan has coalesced in the thought complexes of love, then the physical manifestations begin to appear. This first manifestation stage being awareness or consciousness. At the point at which this coalescence is at the livingness or beingness point, the point or fountainhead of beginning, space-time then begins to unroll its scroll of livingness. Questioner, as the love creates the vibration I will make this statement, first. Let me say, I believe that love creates the vibration in space-time in order to form the photon. Is this correct? I am raw. This is essentially correct. Questioner, then the continued application of love I will assume this is directed by a sub-logos or a sub-sub-logos this continued application of love creates rotations of these vibrations which are in discrete units of angular velocity. This then creates chemical elements in our physical illusion and I will assume the elements in the other or what we would call non-physical or other densities in the illusion. Is this correct? I am raw. The logos creates all densities. Your question was unclear. However, we shall state the logos does create both the space-time densities and the accompanying time-space densities. Questioner, what I am assuming is that the rotations, 
the quantized incremental rotations of the vibrations show up as the material of these densities. Is this correct? I am raw. This is essentially correct. Questioner, well, then because of these rotations there is an inward motion of these particles which is opposite the direction of space-time progression the way I understand it, and this inward progression then is seen by us as what we call gravity. Is this correct? I am raw. This is incorrect. Questioner, can you tell me how the gravity comes about? I am raw. This that you speak of as gravity may be seen as the pressing towards the inner light love, the seeking towards the spiral line of light which progresses towards the creator. This is a manifestation of a spiritual event or condition of livingness. Questioner, now, gravity we know now on our moon is less than it is upon our planet here. Is there a metaphysical principle behind this that you could explain? I am raw. The metaphysical and physical are inseparable. Thus that of which you spoke which attempts to explain this phenomenon is able to, shall we say, calculate the gravitational force of most objects due to the various physical aspects such as what you know of as mass. However, we felt it was necessary to indicate the corresponding and equally important metaphysical nature of gravity. Questioner, I sometimes have difficulty in getting, you might say, a foothold into what I am looking for in trying to seek out the metaphysical principles, you might say, behind our physical illusion. Could you give me an example of the amount of gravity in the third density conditions at the surface of the planet Venus? Would it be greater or less than Earth? I am raw. The gravity, shall we say, the attractive force which we also describe as the pressing outward force towards the Creator is greater spiritually upon the entity you call Venus due to the greater degree of success, shall we say, at seeking the Creator. This point only becomes important when you consider that when all of creation in its infinity has reached a spiritual gravitational mass of sufficient nature, the entire creation infinitely coalesces. The light seeking and finding its source and thusly ending the creation and beginning a new creation much as you consider the black hole, as you call it, with its conditions of infinitely great mass at the zero point from which no light may be seen as it has been absorbed. Questioner, then the black hole would be a point am I correct in saying it would be a point at which the environmental material had succeeded in uniting with unity or the creator? Is this correct? I am raw. The black hole which manifests third density is the physical complex manifestation of this spiritual or metaphysical state. This is correct. Questioner, Thank you. Then when our planet Earth here gets fully into fourth density, will there be a greater gravity? I am raw. There will be a greater spiritual gravity thus causing a denser illusion. Questioner, this denser illusion then I will assume would increase the gravitational acceleration above the measured 32.2 feet per second squared that we now experience. Is this correct? I am raw. Your entities do not have the instrumentation to measure spiritual gravity but only to observe a few of its extreme manifestations. Questioner, this I know, that we can't measure spiritual gravity, but I was just wondering if the, the physical effect would be measurable as an increase in the gravitational constant? That was my question. I am raw. The increase measurable by existing instrumentation would and will be statistical in nature only and not significant. Questioner, okay. Now, as the creation is formed, as the atoms form from rotations of the vibration which is light, they coalesce in a certain manner sometimes. They find distances, interatomic distances from each other at precise distance and produce a lattice structure which we call crystalline. I am guessing that because of the formation from intelligent energy of the precise crystalline structure that it is possible by some technique to tap intelligent energy and bring it into the physical illusion by working through the crystalline structure. Is this correct? I am raw. This is correct only in so far as the crystalline physical structure is charged by a correspondingly crystallized or regularized or balanced mind-body-spirit complex. Questioner, I don't wish to get off on subjects of no importance or subjects that don't lead us to a better understanding of our mechanism of growth, which lead us to things that are not transient, but it's difficult sometimes to see precisely what direction to go in. I would like to investigate a little bit more this idea of crystals and how they are used. I'm assuming then from what you said that in order to use the crystal to tap intelligent energy, it is necessary to have a partially undistorted mind-body-spirit complex. Is this satisfactory, or do you need is this correct? I am raw. This is specifically correct. Questioner, there must be a point at which the removal of distortion reaches a minimum for use of the crystal in tapping intelligent energy. Is this correct? I am raw. This is correct only if it is understood, shall we say, that each mind-body-spirit complex has an unique such point. Questioner, 
Can you tell me why each mind-body-spirit complex has this unique point of distortion ridding? I am raw. Each mind-body-spirit complex is a unique portion of the one creator. Questioner, then you are saying that there is no single level of, shall we say, purity required to tap intelligent energy through crystals but there can be a wide variation in the amount of distortion that an entity may have, but each entity has to reach his particular point of what I might call energizing the ability. Is this right? I am raw. This is incorrect. The necessity is for the mind-body-spirit complex to be of a certain balance, this balance thus enabling it to reach a set level of lack of distortion. The critical difficulties are unique for each mind-body-spirit complex due to the experiential distillations which in total are the, shall we say, violet ray beingness of each such entity. This balance is what is necessary for work to be done in seeking the gateway to intelligent infinity through the use of crystals or through any other use. No two mind-body-spirit crystallized natures are the same. The distortion requirements, vibrationally speaking, are set. Questioner, I see. Then if you are able to read the violet ray of an entity, to see that ray, is it possible then to immediately determine whether the entity could use crystals to tap intelligent energy? I am raw. It is possible for one of fifth density or above to do this. Questioner, is it possible for you to tell me how a crystal is used by an entity who has satisfactorily achieved necessary violet ray qualification? I will say. How it is possible for the entity to use the crystal or how he should use the crystal? I am raw. The gateway to intelligent infinity is born of, shall we say, the sympathetic vibration in balanced state accompanying the will to serve, the will to seek. Questioner, but can you tell me precisely what the entity would do with the crystal to use it for the purpose of seeking the intelligent infinity? I am raw. The use of the crystal in physical manifestation is that use wherein the entity of crystalline nature charges the regularized physical crystal with this seeking, thus enabling it to vibrate harmonically and also become the catalyst or gateway whereby intelligent infinity may thus become intelligent energy. This crystal serving as an analog of the violet ray of mind body spirit in relatively undistorted form. Questioner, is it possible at all for you to instruct us in specific uses of crystals? I am raw. It is possible. There are, we consider, things which are not efficacious to tell you due to possible infringement upon your free will. Entities of the Confederation have heard in this in the past. The uses of the crystal, as you know, include the uses for healing, for power, and even for the development of life forms. We feel that it is unwise to offer instruction at this time as your peoples have shown a tendency to use peaceful sources of power for disharmonious reasons. Questioner, I guess what we'd better get to then, now that we have traced the path of creation at least down to the crystalline structure, we'd better concentrate on the evolution of thought and its seeking path to intelligent infinity. We have created, in the major galaxy of the Logos, a very large number of planets. As these planets develop, is it possible for you to give me an example of various planetary developments in what I would call a metaphysical sense having to do with the development of consciousness and its polarities throughout the galaxy? In other words I believe that some of these planets develop quite rapidly into higher density planets and some take longer times. Can you give me some idea of that development? I am raw. This will be the final full query of this session. The particular logos of your major galaxy has used a large portion of its coalesced material to reflect the beingness of the creator. In this way there is much of your galactic system which does not have the progression of which you speak but dwells spiritually as a portion of the logos of those entities upon which consciousness dwells there is, as you surmise, a variety of time-space periods during which the higher densities of experience are attained by consciousness. Does this fulfill the requirements of your query? Questioner, I'll study it and possibly have something tomorrow since I don't want to avert hire the instrument. The instrument had a question if you have time for a short question, and I will read it. The instrument does not desire to do physical healing work. She already does spiritual balancing by hands. Can she read the private healing material without doing physical healing? I am assuming that she means can she read it without creating problems in her life pattern? She does not wish to incur lessening of positive polarity. Can she read this material under of those conditions, I am raw. We shall speak shortly due to the fact that we are attempting to conserve this instrument's vital energies during the three-month period of which we have spoken. This entity has an experiential history of healing on levels other than the so-called physical. Thus it is acceptable that this material be read. However, 
The exercise of fire shall never be practiced by this instrument as it is used in the stronger form for the physical healing. Is there any short query further before we close? Questioner, is there anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or improve the contact? I am raw. You are conscientious. The entity is well aligned. I am raw. I leave you now in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. End of session 29.